Well, good morning. I am not Eric Huffman. So there you go. I don't know. He didn't show this morning. And so uh, I, uh, I'm preaching. That's not true. He actually did. He, uh, he's preaching over at St. Luke's. Uh, my name's Tom Pace. I am uh, one of the pastors on uh, the staff of the mothership. And uh, we're uh, so glad. Uh, I'm so glad to be here. This is, uh, the, the story is awesome. And God is doing amazing things here and through uh, you people. And it is an incredible uh, gift for us, me, uh, to be a part of it. So uh, I want to begin there. But I, but I want to say uh, this, too. Um, this is a really dangerous time in the life of the story. And it's dangerous because uh, with this incredible, you know, I, somebody told me the other day that their sister came to Christ through the store Houston, and I, you know, it's just, it just melts my heart. I'm so excited and so proud of what the story's doing. And then that pride begins to sort of, see we, see, we begin to think that maybe it's because we're doing something right. We're doing the right things, and we got it together. That's dangerous, right? That's what I want to talk to you about today, because that's what our scripture is really, uh, is really looking at. So um, I want you to turn in your Bibles, if you have them. We're going to, uh, I'm, I'm really excited. I know you're working your way through Romans, and uh, Eric is allowing me to preach sort of the topic sentence of Paul's letter to the Romans. I mean, it's the basic core of, of the teaching of Paul in Romans. It's chapter 3. I'm gonna, I want to begin with verse 21, and we're, um, we're just going to go through verse 25. But now apart from the law, the righteousness of God has been disclosed and is attested by the law and the prophets. The righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe. For there is no distinction, since all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. They are now justified by his grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God put forth as a sacrifice of atonement by his blood, effective through faith. Join me in prayer. Oh God, open us up. Uh, open our eyes that we might see, our ears that we might hear what you have prepared for each one of us today. Open our hearts that we might feel, break them if need be. And then, oh God, open our hands that we might serve. Amen. So I want to begin with this uh, verse 24 as we try and understand this. They are now justified. What does that mean, justified? <clears throat> I think we have to start with sort of basics. God's greatest desire is to be in an intimate relationship with you. God's greatest desire is to be in a relationship with you. Uh, when my uh, oldest child was um, small, she went to a school in um, South Houston called St. Christopher's. And St. Christopher's was pretty structured. So they all wore their uniforms. And when we went and bought Katie's uniform, we had to buy something called a chapel tam. It's like a little beanie that they would wear, and they would have to wear it to chapel. And they were required when they walked through the halls at all times to have their hands folded in front of them and their thumbs crossed in what they called the prayer cross. And they would walk everywhere like this through the halls, you know. And I thought, these are Stepford children that are, uh, some of you are too young to know Stepford children. But uh, it just seems like military school for preschoolers, you know. And so uh, one day, I decided I was going to go over, and I was going to really check them out. And if it wasn't, you know, if it was too rigid, I was going to yank her. And uh, so I went to chapel. And Father Pat, who was the priest there, came out to do chapel, and he's wearing his his stuff. It's an Episcopal church, and it's, a, I mean, he's got vestments. I would decide, I want to be Episcopalian. I can wear stuff like that. That is, <laughs> I mean, it's just really cool. And he, he sat down. He was an older fella, gray hair, kind of long hair. 
And he, and he had, you know, one of those hats on and everything. And so um, he said, I, I, was, I was ready to judge him. And he said, you know, um, way, way back, he's talking to the kids, way, way back, a long, long time ago, God wanted to have a party. And he looked around, and there was no one to have a party with. So he made you. He made you to be one of his friends that could come to his party. And I thought, I like this guy. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's the essence of, of the creation narrative. That out of God's desire to be in relationship, he created us. That, that was the point. And so the flip side of that, and what that, why that matters to us is because as God created us, God put within our hearts a, the deepest desire to be with God. Right? So the flip side is that just as God's greatest desire is to be with us, our heart's greatest desire is to be in relationship with God. Right? That's, that's what, uh, what we were made for. I, I am a... Uh, James Taylor fan. Every, you know, everybody's got their comfort music that they listen to, and uh, JT is my comfort music. And JT, uh, he sings a song called Anywhere Like Heaven. He says, when I walk along your city streets and look into your eyes, and I see the simple sadness that across your features lies. The root of that simple sadness, I'm not talking about grief, I'm not talking about, you know, when when there's difficulties, I'm talking about, I mean, those kinds of emotions are just a fine, part of uh, what it means to be a human being. But that simple sadness grows out of a broken relationship with God. St. Augustine said that the heart will always be restless until it finds its rest in thee, O Lord. We were made to be in an intimate relationship with Jesus. That was put in everyone's heart, that longing. So listen, this, this scripture is full of all these church, churchy Jesus words, right? Righteousness, justified, redemption, atonement. All of those words, at, the, at their core, they have different perspectives, but all of them at their core mean the same thing. They mean being in right relationship with God. To be justified means to be in right relationship with God. Atonement means at one meant, to have that relationship restored. Right? These are, when you see the word righteousness, think right relationship with God. So to be justified means to be in that relationship. I used to have a, a youth director who worked with us. And he was one of those guys who always sort of pushed the envelope um, and got himself in trouble periodically. Um, he, he was a lot of fun, but regularly he would come in to me and we'd have to have a little come to Jesus talk, you know? <laughs> and at the end of every, pretty much at the end of every time we met, even just a regular meeting, wasn't even one of those, he would say, so, we good? <laughs> and I'd say, oh yeah, we good. Right? Right? Are we good? Yeah, we good. That's, that's what justified means. That that, that that relationship is good, that we're restored. So, so here's the problem. Go back a verse to verse 22 and then verse 23. For there is no distinction since all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Because, see, here's, the natural, here's our natural desire. We say, look, there's this broken relationship between us and God, and I need to do something to fix it. And so I'm going I'm to I'm work to fix that broken relationship. Of course I am. I feel that longing. And, and the truth is that as hard as I work, as, as much as I try, I can't seem to get it fixed. I'm going to try by just being a really good person. I'm going to really be a good person. Moral goodness. 
We try to, to bridge that gap through uh, being really good. In fact, sometimes, sometimes I, I, I really struggle with uh, the church because I'll listen to my own preaching and it's sort of like I'm trying to say, here's how you be good girls and boys. Right? Here, I want you to look at this continuum. This is Adolf Hitler, if you don't know Adolf. <laughs> this is Mother Teresa. Now here's my question for you. Where do you fit on this continuum? How good are you? I'm going to actually ask you to vote where you are. All right? How many, and we're going to close our eyes. I'm going to ask you to raise your hand. So put yourself on that continuum. I'm going to give you just about 10 seconds. And we're, I'm going to ask you to vote in the first, so the first I'm going to say, how many of you fall on the left half? And how many of you fall on the right half? All right? Ready? So close your eyes, because I, and I'll tell you, I won't call out any, what anyone said. Uh, how many of you are on the Adolf Hitler half? Raise your hand. All right, we got some of those folks. And how many of you are on the Mother Teresa half? You, some of you are just chicken. <laughs> You will not vote. All right. Here, here's, by the way, most, we had a few, we have more on the Mother Teresa uh, half. A lot of Mother Teresa's out there today. Here, here's the deal. The line is way over there. All have sinned. And nobody can be good enough. As hard as you try, as hard as you try, you fail every time. Or, or maybe you try by just sort of say, okay, I'm just going to, I know like, I know what's in my heart and I know there's all this brokenness in there, but I'm, gonna, I'm going to do good deeds. And I'm going to live my life trying to really be, really do good things and make a difference in the world around me. And, and, you know, I'll have to tell you that this is sort of my temptation. Uh, at the end of Matthew 9 and the beginning of Nat Matthew 10, Jesus calls the disciples to him and he sends them out. He says, uh, uh, gives them authority to do the very things he's been doing, to cure the sick and, and cleanse the leper and uh, welcome the outcast and bring good news to the poor and free the oppressed and all of those things. He gives them authority and sends them out to do the very things he's been doing. And I hear that, and I'm going to say, I'm going to go do that, and then God will accept me because I have made my life worth something. Right? That's, uh, that's what we tend to do. But <laughs> have you ever seen Schindler's List? You know, here, Oscar Schindler gives his, he spends his fortune uh, rescuing Jews during the Holocaust. And he, what he does is he buys them. Uh, he bribes the German officers, he buys them, and then he saves them, and he takes them out of the country. 1,100 Jews he saves. And in the movie, there's this scene that just breaks my heart every time. Because he, he's, been giving, he's being given this gift, it's actually a ring, that's a gold ring that's being given to him by uh, some of the Jews that he saved. And it, he just breaks down and he says, I could have saved so many more. If my car, if I'd have sold my car, I could, have, I could have saved more. He said, you don't know how much money I've just wasted. It's never enough. It's never enough. Now, here's where sometimes we really fall into trouble. We think, you know, I know I'm not good enough, but maybe I can be spiritual enough. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to join the Story Houston. And, uh, you know, they've got awesome worship. I'm going to learn to raise my hands in prayer. And, um, you know, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take the book. I'm going to join a chapter. And I'm going to join a chapter, and we're going to learn what righteousness and justified and redemption and atonement mean. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sign up for Jubilee Prison Ministry, and I'm going to uh, go to the Dominican Republic, and I'm going to do all of these wonderful things, and I'm going to just be a part of this awesome community. And because I'm a part of this awesome community, I'm, uh, God's going to welcome me me and say, yay, look how spiritual they are. 
it falls so far short. Right? It, it is, you know, now, the, the, we understand, of course, that, the, that, the, um, that Paul was saying, no, following the Jewish law doesn't get you there. But sometimes what we do is, is we decide that our religion will get us to heaven will get us into this right relationship with God. Uh, J. Vernon McGee is a great Bible teacher. He passed away a number of years ago. He has this great illustration uh, uh, called Jumping to Catalina Island. And he said when he was small, he and his friends, they lived in in, uh, Santa Monica, would run down the Santa Monica Pier and jump out into the ocean as far as they could. And they they would decide who had jumped farther to Catalina Island. And some would look at the person next to them and say, I jumped farther than you to Catalina Island. Yeah, we can do that. You can can look at the other people in your neighborhood, those who stay home from church, and say, I jumped farther than you did. But friends, Catalina Island's 25 miles away. You're never going to get there. So that's where we start. That is the root of that emptiness. So what's the answer? They are now justified by his grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Look, this is a basic Protestant theology. In the Protestant Reformation, a man named Philip Melanchthon Uh, You can see his, I think you can see something there. Yes. Uh, He wrote over and over and over again. Martin Luther, by the way, was the troublemaker of the the Protestant uh, Reformation. But I was going to say revolution. It kind of is. The Protestant Reformation. But this is the guy who was the brains behind it. He's the theologian. And over and over he'd say, sola fide, sola gratia. That means in Latin, Uh, By faith alone, grace alone, faith alone, grace alone, faith alone, grace alone. Look, it is a gift. We only get it because the the bridge that divides us is you cannot get there. But Christ can get to you. Right? It's God's grace in Christ Jesus that reaches out to you and gives it to you as a free gift gift. When I was in high school, I decided I wanted to change the world by being a politician. Uh, Forgive me. And uh, I really thought that if I could, you know, I wanted to be a part of just reforming the world. And so um, I went to Washington, D.C. for an internship there. And I worked with uh, a congresswoman. I worked with is kind of a overstatement, by the way. I ran her robo-typing machine. And um, her name was Gladys Spellman. She was in the 5th District of Maryland. And uh, we were, I, I was there and enjoyed my time. But what I really wanted to do was see how the Capitol worked. We were across the street in the office building. And so I would go over to the Capitol and try and see cool things happening there. And I couldn't get in anywhere. I mean, there were off, you know, guards everywhere that would keep you out of anything except the rotunda that was there. And what I really wanted to do was get to the members' dining room, which is where the action happens. That's where the magic is, and that's where the deals are made. And it never happened until the very last day when Gladys Spellman, uh, the congresswoman, said, hey, come with me. And you know what? We went to the Capitol. We walked right by the guards. And every time we'd come to a security deal, she would say, they're with me. And we'd go right in. We went to the members' dining room. They're with me. We went into the house chamber. They're with me. It's as simple as that. Jesus is saying, they're with me. Right? I, I have claimed them as mine. There they are. They're mine. It wasn't long ago um, that a man in, in our church, uh, was, he was dying. He was in hospice care. And I was visiting with him, and he uh, he'd had been through a rough time. He lost his family. His wife had divorced him some years before because of his behavior, because uh, of his alcoholism. 
He had, was estranged from his daughter. His daughter wouldn't talk to him anymore. Um, he'd lost much of his money. He drifted away from the church. And we're there, and he um, knows he's dying, and he said, Tom, what do I need to do to, to get right with God? What do I need to do to get right with God? And I took a deep breath, and I said, there's nothing you can do. The sin is too great. There's nothing you can do. But Jesus has already done it. Jesus did it for you. 